finally arrived. It's uh, the 2nd of July and uh, the boys are going back to Algonquin. Woo! <laughs> we uh, had a May trip planned. Kobe pushed that one back. We had a June trip planned. The uh, Ontario lockdown pushed that one back. And then we pretty much gave up on planning until uh, this weekend. It's basically Canada Day long weekend. And uh, we're going to introduce Mike to Greenleaf. Uh, everyone else has been there. It's one of our favorite lakes in the park. And uh, man, it's been a really long time. So I'm looking forward to it. And the first paddle of the year has begun. Mark next to me. And Mike and Edgar are up there in the tandem. So we're uh, about 20 minutes of paddling in and uh, already stopped. Cigarette break, filling water. Not out of fatigue or anything, just why not? We're not in a rush. Mike is busy uh, insulting all of the YouTubers. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, he's, lo he's loyal. <laughs> never really bothered truly fishing Grand Lake, but, you know, trolling and the few casts I've done on it, I've never caught a fish here. Well, there's motorboats in this lake, there's... Uh... Water looks high to me. First fish of the trip. A little tiny guy. A little bricky. Tangled the shit out of my life. Uh, what? There's fish in this lake? <laughs> first fish in trip, first fish on grand ever. Yep. So after some, probably something like two hours of paddling, we just got to our first portage. Uh, I don't remember what it says on the map in terms of length, but when you total the, the forks we have to take to get to Greenleaf, it's somewhere in the five and a half to six kilometer range. First portage of the year, so far it feels pretty good on the shoulders. So just reached the summit of the portage where it forks, it starts going downhill. So probably about another kilometer and a half of portaging to do, but like the hard part's done now. For the last 500 meters, uh, we leave the uh, the power line road and we're on a real portage. It goes to Greenleaf. Two casts, two fish. First one got off because my drag was too tight. I think it's smallmouth bass because they're jumping. Like the f first one, I didn't. I, only, I heard it jump right when I hooked it, but then it got off when it was under the water. This one I haven't seen yet. Going for runs. Wow. He's got some energy.
first fish of the day, literally in five minutes of fishing. A very nice size smallmouth. I got the third fish on. It's like the guys have uh, arrived at the end of the portage and they're getting their boats in the water. But meanwhile, just catching fish. Feels like another smallmouth. Uh, yeah, it's a smallmouth. Oh my god, I can see a ton of them in the water swimming next to it. out of this guy get him back in the water so we made the executive decision we're gonna go see uh, see if we can make the third campsite work it's a nicer even though it's a small campsite with not very many good hammock trees um, it's better put in it's a nice fireplace next to the water it's, it's it's a nicer campsite than this first one so we're gonna paddle over the other side of the lake uh, see if we can make it work and uh, hopefully catch some fish on the way about one minute of trolling, we've got a, probably another bass one. Oh yeah? Nice. Mine's not little, whatever it is. <laughs> it's another smallmouth though, I'm pretty sure. hasn't jumped yet. This is what has me nervous. Yeah, another smallie. A little smaller than the other ones, but still good size. Sorry? Oh yeah, there's tons. Another good size smallie. Gonna get this hook out and let him go. Another fish on. I just saw a jump, I'm pretty sure it's another smallie. These are just beautiful smallmouth. Oh, welcome to Greenleaf, Mike. <laughs> Looks like Edgar's hooked up. That's a uh, smallmouth bass. It broke the fishing rod? Holy shit. Oh, I 
yeah, it snapped it off, eh? Yeah. bigger now that I look at it for real. It's heavy. So Edgar, uh, is that your biggest bass? Yes. Very nice fish. Biggest fish so far. Yeah, it, took, it took a while to get the hooks out, so get him back in the water. Yeah. Ah, oh, he's good. Yeah. Greenleaf, boys. <laughs> fish breaks your lure. That <laughs> uh, breaks your, your rod, rather. Looks like Mark's got something hooked up. Using a deep diver? Oh, it looks like a brookie. Or no, a fallfish, maybe. Oh, it's a brook trap. I don't have them. Uh, I don't have it either. Oh, you don't have that either? Like it's under my bag somewhere. That's all right. Actually, a bigger, bigger than it looked when I was looking at it swim. You want my net? Well, you'll just have to unhook it yourself from my bag if you want. It. So we kept trying to uh, make it to the third campsite on Greenleaf. Well, we kept catching fish. Everybody caught one, right? Yep. Ah, actually, yep. you caught one yeah. too, Mike? Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Everybody caught a fish. No one, no one skunked on this trip. It's already a great start. As only day one. Anyway, so uh, Mark, Mark uh, caught a brookie that got tangled. So we were sort of stopped for a while, and all of a sudden you started hearing like huge thunder, and the raindrops were starting. So we made a beeline for the campsite, and we literally just got the uh, bug shelter up in time, and so we're. Pretty much just hunker down until it stops before we set up our hammocks. Luckily, uh, Edgar's wife Tanya, uh, Tiny T, Tiny T, <laughs> she made us some uh, some ham sandwiches because we had not eaten yet today at all. No breakfast, no lunch, a few like little snacks like uh, some gorp and stuff like that, and that's it. So anyway, we're waiting out the rain and we're gonna set up the camp. So the rain has given us a break. So we're all taking the time to set up our hammocks. I got the amok right here near the shore. We got the uh, bug shelter which is on the other side of the fire pit. And Mark, Edgar, and Mike are along uh, along the tree line, not in that direction. So the end of the afternoon's been really beautiful. We all went for a swim. Get a little refreshed, and uh, now basically all we have to do is get some wood, and then we can do whatever we want. Typical of our first night in Algonquin, we have uh, steaks on the fire. But this time we have some vegetables. We've got some mashed potato. Very much needed sleep. A really misty morning. It was uh, forecast to go down to about 10 to 13 degrees Celsius last night. Definitely closer to 10 degrees, I'd say. It was pretty cold. But uh, great sleeping weather. Everybody else is still sleeping, so I'm gonna head up to the morning uh, trolling trip here. See if I can't catch a laker. So far, we've caught brookies, bass, fallfish. So, uh, Lakers are the only ones left. Um, might have my first fish of the morning here. Yeah, 
There's a fish on. tiny lake trip right, I'll get them unhooked and get them back in the water so I've probably been fishing for about half an hour 45 minutes this morning and uh, only that small lake trip so far I'm trying uh, different lures different depths trying to figure out uh, what they like and where they are um, but right now I'm just gonna go back to camp and have breakfast uh, that's just gonna be some garlic toast and some bacon this morning So you just try and keep, you don't want to pull it, but you want to keep enough line that you'd see a, you know, a tug on it. And then you just a little bit, tap, see if there's any resistance, let it sink. So on canoe trips uh, for personal water filtration, I use a Be Free uh, water filter. But I've gone through several of the bags that the Be Free's uh, come with. They're really thin plastic and they always get little puncture holes in them over time so i just this trip is the first time i'm using it so we'll see how it lasts over time but it's a hydro pack flux bottle it fits perfectly for the b3 has a little handle that you can attach it to things it uh, has a flat base so it stands up on its own um so far really happy with it it's a one liter um but uh, yeah we'll see if it's as, it feels like much tougher rubber um but we'll see over time how well it lasts First tiny fish of the trip, a little rock bass. Next couple casts, got a little small smallmouth. As their name suggests, there's tons of these rock bass. Just like that little rock fall here. This is a little creek that uh, comes down from a lake that on uh, Just Maps shows there's no portage to get to it. It's called Lost Lake. One day, if I have enough energy, I'm, I'd like to try and bush back through there. It looks like it's pretty far uphill, though. Water's a little higher and some of the logs were in a bit better position so I was able to get farther than normal. Probably gonna stop here. It sounds like there's a little drop off coming up. But, uh, I don't feel like, no, well, there might be a way through. We'll see. Oh, it's one of these. Well, I was able to push enough logs out of the way. 
to get to this little runoff here. But I think this is the end of the road. Yeah, definitely. This is a, a pride moment for Mike, his greatest accomplishment. He just climbed about a three foot boulder. Enjoying the infinite rock bass. I had, to, I had to stop casting for this. I only caught two real bass along the shore, but like just every cast, rock bass, rock bass, rock bass. But at least they're a good enough size that they're fun. Well, yeah, your lure's a little smaller than mine, so maybe catch the smaller guys. I got something that looked like a trout, but I probably caught about 50 rock bass going here and only two bass. Okay. Two small ones. Uh, Len Thompson, but the smaller Len Thompson. Here's got a real fish. Yeah. Make sure you're drag. Give him, give him room to slide if he needs to slide. Sorry? Uh, it happens. You want the net or? Yeah, oh wow, nice fish. Yeah, nice smallmouth bass. Decent size. Making our way to Lost Lake. Just find yourself a flat spot to stand on to assess the situation. Be very careful there. See the situation. Keep turning now. That's like another ten feet up. Yeah. And that's that's like a sheer. I think. Across here. And do it on the other side. You see, it still goes. You think? Oh, does it? Yeah. It goes up another ten feet. Dude, that's not a trail there. That's what I was just looking at. It looks doable? It looks doable to me. You want to give it a shot? Right this might be a trail right here. Oh yeah. This is proving to be a bitch. That looks like it's on flat ground, but this is what I'm staring at, and this is what, when I look up. So we're looking at almost 80 something degrees. So we decided to go out, trying to make it to Lost Lake. It looks like there's a path and it looks like we could make it up, but uh, we didn't bring any rope or anything with us and it's actually coming down. There's a lot of loose soil. It's a pretty steep angle, so if you lost your footing, it just doesn't make sense. So it's the morning of day three. I uh, had a nice cool night last night, slept pretty good. Yesterday afternoon after uh, we tried to make our middle last lake. Um, we didn't do much else. We paddled back to the camp. Um, basically, there was a little bit of rain. Um, we had supper, but we basically just sat around and uh, were uh, yeah, being wise asses, just having a good time. Nothing really worth filming. But uh, today, we're um, pretty much uh, not going to do much else but uh, go home because Mark's got a lot of driving to do today. So that's basically it. So all packed up back in the boat, uh, going out the same way we came. So starting the morning off with a quick paddle, six kilometer portage, then the long paddle back to the truck. Hill River. 
about to climb. This part so we're down the portage, back in the water. Got an hour and a half paddle back to the truck. And that's it for this little weekend trip.